OK, we're now joined by Coach Mack. You'll start with some opening remarks and then we'll take questions. Got you, Coach. Yep, you hear me? Yeah. OK, hey, um, you know, I know most of you seen the video and I want to take a few minutes to uh, address it. Uh, I'll give you some context first and then give you my thoughts uh, after that. I, I would tell you that you know, most of you know, it was after the Kentucky game. You know, I was having the uh, Mac family Christmas. We had a three day break uh, immediately following the game. So, uh, you know, I was having Christmas at the house. Uh, a few neighbors walked over uh, to my house and um, they happened to be really, really good friends with Kenny Payne. Golfing buddies, they go way back, uh, hang out together. They've known him. I, I don't know Kenny that well, uh, but Eric and uh, his buddy, really, really good friends with Kenny. They thought it'd be funny to, FaceTime him, text him, and uh, give him grief for the game. And that's what they did. And uh, obviously it led to the video that was then sent to Kenny. And so um, that was the context. It was, a, it was a private video. Obviously it's not private today. It's why I'm talking to you guys. Uh, but it was a joke amongst buddies to Kenny. How it got out, I have no idea. And it's really uh, irrelevant. Um, although Kenny didn't get it out. so. Uh, but, you know, I recognize, hey, listen, the position I'm in at Louisville, you know, I got to do right by my players. And, um, you know, two things I think really stick out about the video to me, if you don't have much context, and that is number one, COVID. You know, I've, I've, like we all have for the last year or so, I have great respect for it. We've, we've had to do uh, everything under the sun from eating in our own rooms at, uh, at hotels to wearing masks to conducting film sessions on the basketball court rather than the film room, just like everybody else has had to sacrifice. Now, I'll say this, when people come over to my house, which hasn't been very often since last March, uh, I'm probably a violator and obviously was that night. Neighbors or friends stopped by and not putting on my mask around the house. And so uh, not a good look. And so for that, I, I uh, got to do better. You know, the second thing is uh, the first thing I really thought of was was Cal Perry. You know, I didn't want him to think it was some shot, you know, that this was directed out to the World Wide Web and that I was trying to send a message to him. So that was the first person I called when I was aware of the video yesterday morning. I just wanted to be able to clear the air and tell him the great respect that I have for him and his program and the job that he's done. And that's how I feel, you know, and so I wanted him to know it was a joke to Kenny Payne and uh, obviously it went sideways. So, you know, as I tell my players, when you do things that, uh, you know, happen in the spotlight, you got to own it. And um, fortunately about me, I own things. And so I live and learn by them and uh, we'll move forward. But that's sort of the context of the video. If I offended anybody, uh, I feel bad for doing that. But that wasn't what the intention was by any means, but it's neither here nor there. So talk to Vince about it and uh, just don't want it to be a distraction for our team uh, any more than it's been. I want to talk about Notre Dame and move forward. Any questions? Any questions? We have a question uh, from Tim Sullivan. If you have a question, drop it in the chat, please. Yeah, Chris, I mean, you've acknowledged that the COVID issue is uh, uppermost in your mind on this. Um, Three soccer players were dismissed from the program over failure to observe safety protocols. Uh, do you think that you are deserving of any kind of discipline? You know, Tim, that's not really um, that's not really my um, that's not really my judgment call. You know, as I said, I made an error. You know, it's not like I invited everybody over to a big party at the house. But uh, you know, be a big boy, and whatever comes my way comes my way. But no. Thank you. Matt, you're up. Hey, Coach. Uh, Matt McGavick with Sports Illustrated. Obviously, uh, after that loss, it was pretty demoralizing the way it panned out. But how did you guys respond over the next couple of days in practice? Well, Matt, we've only had one practice. Obviously, we had, you know, yesterday's practice. Um, you know, I, I really liked our guys' response. You know, it, it, it's been, 
it's been a wild deal, you know, on again, off again. You know, I can't imagine the players, you know, sitting in their dorm wondering, do we have practice today? You know, are we going to play again this Saturday? Um, just the way the schedule's unfolded. But, you know, I, I thought our response yesterday was a really good one. As I told our team, you know, after the game, we needed to have the best two practices of the year. Uh, we're waiting here on practice number two that I'm about to walk into. And if it's anything like yesterday, then then we're going to get a whole lot better. Now, if that's good enough to beat Notre Dame, I don't know. But, um, you know, we uh, we didn't we didn't perform well. We didn't do a lot of things well uh, at Carolina. They had a lot to do with it. But um, I think we'll be better tomorrow. And uh, I really liked our team's response yesterday. Shannon. Uh, just quick to start, uh, Dre Davis looked like he had a, a thigh bruise in the last game. How's he doing? He looks fine, Shannon. You know, uh, Fred gave him treatment that night. You know, he had full range of motion the next day. Uh, he went through yesterday's practice, um, you know, surprisingly, uh, without any uh, interruption, without having to sit out any drills. Uh, Dre's a very tough kid, as you know. And, um, you know, he's, he's bounced back, and I, I didn't see any ill effects yesterday in practice. And then to follow up on that, do you expect Josh Nickelberry to be back for this game? I don't. You know, Josh has tested negative um, a few days in a row now, you know, three, four days in a row. And it's just he's just sick. You know, I think they're trying to get strep tests, flu tests, figure out what's going on. But um, you know, it's not COVID and uh, he just uh, doesn't feel well. Jerry Tipton. Yeah, Chris, uh, just one thing about the video. You said you called John Calipari first thing. What was his reaction? Um, gracious as always, you know, Jerry, I mean, he, um, you know, he was, uh, he was understanding. I think he understood the context, um, you know, and, and, uh, anytime I've ever dealt with, with, you know, coach Cal Perry's, uh, he's been great. So he, um, he offered a few words of advice, uh, which I'll just keep between he and I, but, uh, <laughs> I was appreciative of his, of his response. Thank you. Fred and then Jody. Sorry, I'm having computer problems. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, awesome. Coach, you know, obviously time is short. You just have a couple of weeks left in the regular season. What do you tell the guys about both the challenges ahead in terms and also the opportunities, you know, that the weird vibe you have with all these on again, off again things. And, and obviously in the net rankings, you've dropped a lot, but you still have an opportunity to fit in the ACC. Yeah. I mean, knock on wood, this is, the last pause we have to deal with, you know, I think our guys are hypersensitive walking around on, you know, pins and needles with, uh, you know, the pauses we've had to take. So, you know, let's hope that we can, you know, stay uh, continuous in terms of practice days and, and games and, you know, make the most of those those opportunities that, uh, as you said, aren't, aren't as many as they were a month ago. So, um, you know, it's been a uh, strange and wild ride and, and, you know, we're starting to, as crazy as it sounds, we're starting to get almost everybody back. And um, you know, now we just need some continuity and hopefully we can make the most of our opportunities. Jody? Chris, it, were you, it, it was almost a year between real games that Malik was in there. And I know there was a lot of rust and it was the first game back, but were you a little surprised that he was where he was last week that you were able to play him at all? Well, I think, Jody, that's that's the time that he was really shooting for uh, all along, as long as we didn't have any setbacks. Um, how he was going to perform was a different question. But I thought that, you know, we would get him on the floor. Uh, could have been Syracuse game, could have been North Carolina, just somewhere around the middle of uh, February is what we were shooting for. And he never really has had any setbacks. His conditioning still has to get, um, you know, get all the way back. It's just different riding a bike or doing an elliptical and then playing. His timing certainly has to get back, but the voice that he has on the floor on both ends um, is is a really good one. Strong leadership. Uh, he has great court awareness, but he also hasn't played with a few of the guys that are on the team, and so that's 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 a challenge as well, but you know, the more we can put him out there, hopefully the more normal it gets for him, and uh, he can be uh, a big part of this team down the stretch. Jody? Sorry, Kent uh, Spencer. Chris, with uh, with the game Saturday night, 
Is that something, do you even review that with the guys or considering what you guys kind of went through, you know, with the big layoff and everything a couple of days, do you almost kind of throw that tape away and, and move on? Well, I think you have to learn from it. And I think we had to show our guys some things that, uh, you know, regardless of what our conditioning level was or, or um, you know, some of the things that maybe you need more practice time. I thought there were some, just some things that we did on the floor that just, you know, whether you have no practice time at all, you, you can't, you can't give up free throw, um, block out offensive rebounds like we did. You know, we, Carolina, you know, was, I don't know, one for 11, two for 11 from the free throw line at one point, but they kept on getting every miss back. And um, that, that that can't happen. So we had to show our guys, you know, some of that film um, so that we can learn from it. And they can see the mistakes that were made um, so that we can improve in those areas. Tim? Yeah, Chris. So Malik was on earlier and we asked him, uh, or I asked him if, uh, He'd given any thought to coming back next year. I guess he's eligible, but at his age, do you think that's a realistic option? And uh, would you encourage him to come back? Yeah, I mean, I do think it's a realistic option. You know, he's been robbed of a, a whole year of basketball, um, you know, and his development uh, is disrupted because he's concentrating on, on trying to get healthy. So uh, we would love to have Malik back. He and I have talked about that. You know, I know that the decision is down the road and not one that he's going to make right now. Um, and so he and I will work through that, uh, you know, when that time comes, but, you know, there's, there's no doubt we would love to have Malik back. Uh, he represents everything we want in our program. I uh, want him to earn his degree as well and, um, you know, leave here a better basketball player than when he got here. Thank you. Coach, thanks for the time. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us. Thank you guys. Hey, guy.